Hi, I'm Dr. Gregory Degnan, the Medical Director for ACAC and a practicing orthopedic surgeon. In today's video, we will be discussing falls in the elderly. When we look at the scope of this problem and the people who are most likely to be involved, it's important to understand that the single most significant risk factor is being over the age of 65. One in three adults over the age of 65 will sustain at least a ground level fall. Among adults over 65, falls are the leading cause of both fatal and non-fatal injuries. Over two million non-fatal fall injuries among older adults are treated in emergency rooms and over 650,000 people are hospitalized each year related to falls in the elderly. When we look at the actual injuries sustained and the potential outcomes of these injuries, it's important to understand that falls are the most common cause of traumatic brain injuries. The vast majority of fractures in older adult population are the result of falls. And a large number of older adults who fall, even when they're not injured, do develop a fear of falling. Often this will lead to a limitation of their activity, reduced mobility, and deconditioning. And ironically, this actually increases their risk of falling and also increases their risk of severe injury from those falls. When we look at why people in this age group tend to fall, we really are looking at two factors. There are the actual physical changes that are related to the aging process, and there are the physical factors related to generally the layouts of our homes. Physically, visual impairment as we age is a significant contributor to falls, both in terms of its impact on our ability to get the visual input for balance and also on our ability to see those things which might cause us to trip and fall. Loss of strength that is associated with aging is another significant factor. There are other changes in our nervous system and in our inner ear that also contribute to loss of balance and our ability to handle uneven terrain. The loss of flexibility that we develop with aging impairs our ability to handle uneven terrain and falls and also impacts our ability to handle the actual impact of the fall, thus resulting in more severe injuries. When we look at the physical layouts of our homes, which contribute to the risk of fall, taken room by room, if we look at our house layout, looking at the kitchen, which is a significant area for falls, and also one of the rooms in which we see the most severe injuries associated with fall, the layout is usually related to how we utilize our storage spaces. Ensuring that things that we use commonly don't require us to reach up overhead or go up onto a step stool is a prevention strategy. When required to use a step stool, it's important to remember not to use chairs and to use rubber shod step stools to ensure no slippage. Hallways should be well lit with night lights and stairwells should have light switches at both the top and bottom of the stairwell and you should ensure that handrails are well fixed and present on both sides of the stairway. In the bedroom, it's important to ensure that the night light that you have next to your bed is easily reachable, and you should ensure that the pathway between the bed and the bathroom is unobstructed and well lit. Floor furniture accessories, such as magazine racks and potted plants, are a common potential source for tripping and falling. Maintain a clear pathway through high traffic areas by eliminating any floor level furniture accessories. A regular exercise program is actually a critical component when we look at both the prevention of falls and also minimizing the severity of injuries which may be sustained from a ground level fall. The American College of Sports Medicine has a position paper or position statement which specifically outlines guidelines for the use of exercise in the elderly population. Resistance training to increase strength will help prevent the ground level fall that so commonly occurs and also as more muscle mass is maintained diminishes the impact of that fall and lessens the severity as of the resulting injury. A flexibility component to your exercise program 
again, improves your balance and minimizes the potential for fall, but also by lessening the rigidity of the body at the time of impact, diminishes the potential for severe injury which can result from that fall. The sad fact is that falls do occur frequently, and the severe injuries that frequently result can significantly impact the quality of life, not only for the patient who falls, but also the family and friends who must care for them and deal with the aftermath. Additionally, the truth is that these falls and the subsequent injuries can not only diminish the quality of life, but also lead to an accelerated demise. In reality, a common sense approach to how we organize our lives and our living spaces and a good regular exercise program that includes some aerobic conditioning, resistance training, and a flexibility program can significantly diminish the risk of those falls and also significantly diminish the potential severity of the injuries which may result.